Hello. I'm just going to give a second for people to get connected. Just give you guys a second and then we'll get started. Okay, we'll get started now. Welcome everybody to today's session. Today we're going to cover a couple different things. Uh, and before I will just go through and we're really going to focus today on your website and the phone call. Those are the two things we're going to prioritize today about answering your phones and it, not just your website, but your online presence altogether. Those are going to be the two topics that we go over today. So if you have your workbook, make sure you refer to that. And again, if I keep looking down, I have my workbook here. I want to make sure I'm following along and my notes over here so I don't leave anything out for you guys. I want to make sure I give you guys all the information that I have. And I do have to apologize. Hi, Karen. How are you? Yesterday, my comments weren't coming through. Hi, Annette. Um, so as I was talking, I could not see any of your guys' comments until the end. Uh, I noticed after we logged off, there was a whole lot of comments, but for some reason while I was live yesterday, those comments were not coming through. So I do apologize for the questions I missed and just some of the interactions I missed yesterday. So it was kind of ironic. I thought, wow, it's kind of quiet on my end here, but you guys actually were engaging. I just couldn't see it. So I am sorry about that. And you guys, just a warning, I have a really running nose, so if I have to, I'm sorry, I might have to just keep, but I just, you know, life doesn't stop even though you've committed to do these things, so. Oh, okay, and just around here, allergies in Northern Nevada are terrible. It is incredibly dusty, so it's always happening around here. So, uh, again, I just kind of want to review yesterday what our main takeaways were. From, we went over the our pillars to, in order to enroll. So the four pillars are know what makes your center unique, you know, know your center superpower, or I talked to you guys a little bit about the queen bee role. And I looked it up today, just I wanted to reference where I got that term from. That was actually from Mike Michalowicz. He's the one who coined the queen bee role in your center. So I wanted to give Mike credit of where credit is due. Um, he has some amazing, wonderful business books. One of my favorites, Profit First, which I actually do. Um, that is what my business's finances are based on is Profit First. So Mike was the one who coined that. And then, uh, so if you guys remember from yesterday, I talked to you about knowing your center's queen bee role. Um, the next pillar is your online presence. You have to be searchable. And we'll go into that today. And then the third one is prioritize a professional persona. You want to make sure that you're always putting your professional foot forward. And follow up. Follow up, it was our fourth pillar. And uh, we talked a lot about knowing what makes you unique, right? Just knowing how are you different and not underestimating things that you may think is everyday stuff like your degrees or your teacher's degrees. You guys don't always realize what kind of stuff we have that really does make us impressive. We get so caught up in our minds on what industry norms are that we forget what the parents don't know, right? That they don't know what we see every day. They don't know what's normal to us. So just don't underestimate your superpowers and what makes you unique. The next thing we talked about is knowing your customer base. And that is something I told you guys, you're gonna have to kind of think outside the box a little bit about, and it's something that isn't something we talk about in our industry, and I challenged you that you're gonna have to kind of think, change your thinking a little bit. Today, we're gonna get even deeper into that, and you're gonna understand why. That might not have made a whole lot of sense to you yesterday, but today, you will understand why. Hi, Melissa, thanks for joining us. Um, so today, I think you're gonna understand a lot more of why did I have you guys do that exercise? Why is figuring out 
you know, um, what kind of car you, uh, your customer drives or what are their hobbies? Why does that matter? Why do we need to know why that is important, right? Why do you guys care what grocery store your customer base shops at? So I'm going to really help you guys out with that a little bit more today and helping you to understand why that is. And on a side note, I noticed this wasn't in my notes, but it is something I want to talk to you guys about. Um, I really want to talk to you guys a little bit about um, how I built my first and second child care centers. Uh, my first center that I opened was, I built it from the ground up. It was licensed for 75. And um, in one of my podcast episodes, I've talked about this. So I don't know if you guys, you might have already heard this story. If you haven't listened to my podcast, you probably haven't heard this story. But one of the things that happened in the city I lived in, uh, we had a major flood. And the flood took out almost 20% of our city's population. It destroyed homes and a lot of people left. Well, that flood happened three weeks before I was set to open. So a lot of the parents who had pre-registered with me and um, they, they left, they left town and it was a huge, huge amount. Even though the flood only took out about 20% of my city's population, I lost about 50% of my initial customer base. So it was really devastating. We thought we were going into this business really set and then we opened our doors and it wasn't what we thought, right? So out of just sheer desperation, we had to figure out how are we going to fill the center? You know, we had hired people already. Oh, and by the way, it pushed back opening because um, keep in mind, we were building a brand new building. So a lot of what happened during the flood, it just destroyed it. So now our opening date was pushed back. A lot of the customers we had that had pre-signed up, they're gone. We lost so much. So I, um, my background before that, believe it or not, was in Avon. I was an Avon rep and I had grown a huge Avon business and um, I actually was, I did so well in Avon that I used the funds to open my first center, right? And so I kind of decided I'm going to take some of the things that I learned in Avon to build my Avon business up. I'm going to use it to build my childcare center up. And I literally would go around and town and if I was grocery shopping or whatever, and I saw a child that would have fit my demographic, I would go up and strike a conversation with their parents, introduce myself. And um, the way I always started every conversation was I started with a sincere compliment about the child. Okay. And it's not hard, you guys, to come up with sincere compliments it's pretty easy to come up with them. Hi, Betsy, I see on. And um, it's really easy for us to come up with these sincere, you know, children are adorable. It's easy. Or even like if you see a mom who's dealing with her two-year-old or two-year-old's just throwing a massive fit or, you know, and don't underestimate grandmas, grandpas, uncles, aunts, sometimes they're the caregivers and they don't wanna be or they just need a break, right? So, um, if I was in the grocery store and a two-year-old was throwing a fit, I would just go over and reassure the parent, like, you know, you're doing a good job. I know it's hard when your two-year-old is screaming in the car, but, you know, just so you know, I know all these other people are judging you, but I think you're doing great. And um, people will just really appreciate it, right? That when you start with some kind of compliment or reassurance, it breaks the ice when it comes to starting a conversation. And then towards the end of the conversations, I would just say, by the way, I'm opening the new preschool that's, you know, over here. I would tell them where it was and I'd give them my business card. That was it. But when you're a director or an owner, and if you're the director, you can easily say, you know, I run this child care center. Or I was hired to be the director at this child care center. If you're existing, it's the same thing. I'm the director. I'm the owner of this, this, this place over down the street, whatever. And give them your business card. And just say, you know, if you're ever needing childcare, make sure you come and see me. People tend to do business with people that they have a personal connection. If you make yourself really just approachable, friendly, you'll be amazed at what will come to you. You might have that stay-at-home mom who is just really desperate 
to have a couple hours a week to get the laundry done, to get some grocery shopping done, right? And if you've just made yourself available, they might think, huh, maybe enrolling my child in a program wouldn't be so bad after all. Maybe I'll go check them out. I'll do, maybe I can do two or three days a week. You might also have grandmas, which I saw you guys, I cannot tell you how many of my customers, my, my original customers were grandmas. And oh. hi, Belinda. Um, how many of my original customers were like a grandparent who was, you know, at the ice cream shop during the day with their grandchild and they were tired. They, they didn't want to be the babysitter, but they were the primary caregiver and they really wanted a break. And you would be amazed how many grandparents I had in the beginning, and I still actually do, that paid for their grandchild to go to childcare because that grandparent really just wanted to enjoy their retirement, but they were stuck as the babysitter while the parents worked. So that was one of the first ways um, after the flood that hit my city that I really uh, used to build my center. And um, part of why you wanna know your customers, right, is because you've gotta know your audience and who you're talking to. You know, if you're, again, I said it yesterday, but it's worth saying again, if you're talking to high end like doctors and lawyers, you're not going to talk to them the same way that you would talk to a warehouse worker. You're not going to dress the same, right? So just be aware when you're out in public and if you're really fighting for enrollment, you're always wearing your customer, you know, your, um, your business, you represent your business, right? And so keep in mind, dress for the part um and act the part if you look like you've been working on your in your garden you know which i do a lot i love gardening so in the springtime if i'm going to lowe's i might look terrible that is not a time i'm going to walk up and introduce myself to a, a potential client right but if you're really struggling for enrollment you guys i can you would not believe and i know you're thinking just talking to one family at a time but think about it how many kids do you need right if you can talk to 10 families a week, which might seem like a stretch, but when you guys, I'm telling you, when you get out and about and go grocery shopping, it's not as difficult as it sounds. And if you can land 50% of them, even if you can just land one a week, by the end of the month, you know, the average month has 4.3 weeks, right? So think about what does that equate to by the end of the year? You know, you can almost get an additional 50, you know, 52 children, there's 52 weeks in the year. So even if you just get one a week. So just think about that. If you're really needing customers, don't be afraid to talk to people. Just be sincere, be friendly. Making connections is one of the best ways to get people to sign up with your center. Building trust. Trust is so incredibly important, right? And just knowing that you are a real person. If you guys think of the public persona, what do people think of daycare? They don't like, you know, and, and I mean, for some people, they're over it, but, but um, some people, daycare is no longer like a dirty word, but in some circles, it still is. So if you can teach some people the human side, and I'll give you guys another example. My, um, kind of my stepbrother, he's, he's actually my cousin, but my mom helped raise him. So he lived with us a lot. It, his grandson just started at my preschool but he, my, he is so anti-child care. He was so upset that his daughter was not a stay-at-home mom who raised her son. And even though he knows that his grandson is with me and, you know, his children call me aunt and this is my nephew, um, it's kind of ironic to me that, you know, it, it, this has been my career for 20 years, but he still has that stigma in his head of what childcare is, right? There is still that stigma. And a lot of people would still rather take their children to their neighbor's house or, you know, and you guys know that statistically only 20% of children are actually in childcare. Think about that, only 20%. That means we have a whole lot of kids to market to. So even though it feels sometimes like our markets are saturated, they're really not. It's just we need to sometimes educate parents that childcare is okay. It's okay to enroll your child in childcare. There is still a stigma on it. 
and we just need to really educate parents. The early childhood education industry in the United States is it has gone leaps and bounds. It's nothing like what it used to be when I first started. The quality is just so much better than it used to be. So sometimes we have to educate parents and that means sometimes you guys, you need to be out there talking to them. Um, so now I, so I wanted to just go over that a little bit because it is a way that I really did build my first business. And my second one too, um, it was actually my third one. The third one I, I built, I uh, purchased one in a very small town that was about an hour away from uh, me. I was the only center in the entire city. So I really had to break the ice on that one, let people get to know me. Uh, it, it, was a, it was a lot of work. And um, I really had to, it was a very small community. It was like only 8,000 people. And in communities that small, word of mouth gets out around a lot. So that community, I really did have to build relationships. So get on your chambers of commerce, um, your rotary clubs. Uh, even one of the things I even did in the beginning was I even volunteered as guest speakers. I would even go in and talk about my business and whatnot as a speaker to the local rotary club, stuff like that, just to break the ice, especially if you're in a small community. In bigger cities, it's not quite as big of a problem, but if you're in a smaller community, um, I would say even as low as smaller than like 50,000 population, you're going to have to figure out a way to break that ice. Okay. And making yourself public, getting out there is pretty important. Uh, so just keep that in mind, just, you know, local organizations, volunteering, um, if your kids are in PTA, get on the PTA, getting out there is really important. It really, you would be amazed how many children you'll get just by doing that. So back to your online presence. I touched on it a little bit yesterday, but I want to talk to you a lot more about why it's so important to have a strong online presence. And one of the reasons um, it's so important, if you think of who our demographic is, who is our customer base, right? That is an incredibly important thing to really just keep in mind. Who are the people who are having children that are, for the most part, most of us are licensed from anywhere from birth to eight years old. You guys, let me know, what are you licensed for? What age groups are you guys um targeting that is our normal target market is birth to eight years old usually it's going to be an average of three to four year olds right that's what most of us are going to do and if you guys are responding i'm sorry my the comments are not coming up on my screen again i don't know what's going on with that i'm gonna to have to figure that out but what are the age groups of the people who are having children that age right so if you look at the demographic of how old is our customer base and then you have to think of what are they using in order to find us? And most people in the age range uh, that is are having children that are our customer base, they're using their telephones. Everything is done on their phone. Most of us are, right? But if you're my age, I'm in my 40s, we don't use it quite as much as the younger generation. Um, you know, so if you're in your 20s and 30s, yes, infants to 12 years old, that's a, a big one. Um, eight weeks to pre-K, absolutely, right? So when we think of eight weeks to pre-K, how old are the people having children that are eight, eight weeks to pre-K, right? So we've got to think, how, what are they doing? How are they finding us? Okay, most of us do the same thing. And I talked about this yesterday again, but I cannot stress how important this is. If we're looking for a restaurant or anything, we're going to our phones, right? I go to Google and I, I Google it. I'm looking for to Google, right? So it is so important, you guys, to know that you are online. So today we're talking about search engine op optimization, SEO, making sure that you are coming up first in your market online. That is huge. The first step for people to find you before you can even do a tour, you've got to be found online. Okay, so I did some research a couple years ago. I did all this myself um, when I was a struggling, back when I was a uh, struggling owner, I, I had to figure this out for myself. So I created my own website. I made sure I was found first. I really worked so hard on all this to make sure um, I was first. And it's ironic because my first center that I did this with, I don't even have it anymore. 
I actually merged into a different center since then, but it's still like, it's still one of, it still comes up and I still, I still, I keep the Facebook page just in case because I still get so many people at least a couple times, um, I would say a few times a year now. And I shut the center down like five years ago, I merged into a different center. So I actually um, took my original center and merged it with my current center because my current facility was twice the size. So think about that though. I still come up like that center that I haven't even fueled for years still comes up like second and third on searches for my city. Uh, so, and I, and my center, and I check this all the time. You got to make sure, but I always make sure that my center comes up first for my entire city. That is one of the things I do make sure of. Um, so with SEO, search engine optimization, that is making sure that when people are looking for childcare in your area, you are their first choice, right? And so the first thing you're going to do when it comes to search engine optimization is you need keywords. That is what people are searching for. And so you need to know when parents are looking for childcare, what are they looking for? I know in our industry, if you guys notice, one of the problems we have is we can't even agree on what to call ourselves. Are we childcare? Are we preschool? Are we daycare? Are we pre-K? Are we early childhood education? Our centers, even our you know, my first center was Little Knights and Maidens Learning Center. My second center was a preschool. My third center was um, Early Adventures Academy. So we can't even be consistent on what we are, right? I mean, if you go to a department store, we know they're department stores. So keep that in mind. And um, when I first started this, I went through a company and I'm trying to remember, um, it was uh, Sumo Crawl, I think it was, but there was a company that you could pay a small fee and I think it, it had like a 30 day free trial. So I used the free trial. And if you typed in your competition, it would give you the number one key terms, right? So what I did was I typed in um, something at the time, it was Children's World, which is no, I don't think Children's World even exists anymore. Uh, but they were the big corporate. So you could type in something like kinder care or bright horizons and see what the key terms and what's going to do. It's the key search terms that, that when people are searching a certain keyword, that is the first thing those websites are the first ones they see, right? So that's what get is actually getting the clicks. That's what we want. We want them to click on our website. The number one, and I still do this, I make sure that I'm keeping up to date on this. We, you've got to make sure. The number one term parents are using when they're searching for us is daycare. 80% of parents are searching the word daycare. I know for some of us, that's a dirty word, right? We've worked really hard. And, you know, I train my staff that we do not call my center a daycare. I've worked way too hard to be a daycare. And if you guys are, there's nothing wrong with that. If that yesterday I talked to you guys a little bit about our superpowers, my superpower is that uh, we're preschool and I've worked really hard for that. But parents do not understand. They don't understand what is the difference between a child care, daycare and a preschool. OK, so we need to use the word daycare. Whether you want to or not, whether you're Raggio, whether you're Montessori, if you're caring for children and you're struggling to bring the parents in, they don't know our jargon. Parents do not know our jargon, okay? And that is something we need to get out of our heads on. We get so stuck on, but I'm not a daycare, I'm Raggio, you know, I'm not a daycare, I'm a Waldorf. But that's not what parents know. They don't understand any of that, you guys. That is our industry. We know this, but parents do not know this. So it's really, really important that we think about how the parent is thinking. Now, once they come to our door, you can absolutely educate them on why you feel your curriculum style or whatever you are is better than somebody else, right? Once they're at the tour, but when it comes to getting them to our website and finding us, we need that word. So daycare.
the other the second big one the other thing with child care that you have to really be careful for is the spelling of child care this is something that i've researched a lot about and um it's interesting because the proper spelling of the word child care is actually two words it's child care right but if you go into microsoft word microsoft word will actually correct your spelling and make it one word okay and if one of the things I did when I was researching this was I researched child care licensing and I didn't put a specific state, nothing, county, nothing like that, just child care licensing. And if you look through the 50 states, about 70% of the states do list child care as two words, but there are quite a few. There was over about 10 of them that do have it as one word. So when you're thinking about making sure that your website is visible to parents, you need to use both spellings. So you need the word daycare, you need the word childcare, both words for childcare. You need preschool, okay? Those are the ones that you've gotta have in there. So how do you do that? How on your website are you going to make sure you're getting all these different words, right? So that's something to really think about. If you guys ever notice when I'm posting for you guys, if you look for my my podcast, look in one of the, uh, every single one of my podcasts has show notes. In every podcast, I figure out a way to get the words daycare, childcare, and preschool in there. All right, so because when you guys, the professionals, are searching for blogs or child you know anything like that i want to make sure that you're finding my podcast so every time i write my show notes i'm making sure i will say something like um are you struggling with staff retention in your preschool program is your daycare having high turnover rates has and then in the title i might have something like employee retention for child care centers. So I figure out a way to make sure that I'm using all those terms, right? So it, when you guys list your superpowers, right? One of the things we want to do is make sure that um, you guys have, you're listing those superpowers out. You're going to use those terms. That's where you're going to put them. You could say something like, my staff has, hello, Alana. My staff has a hundred years combined preschool experience, okay? And then on the next line, you could say, our child care center has um, webcams in every classroom or surveillance cameras in every classroom. So just find creative ways to put all those words in your descriptions without actually making it sound weird. You know, just like it, read it over to make sure that, you know, they're kind of spread out. You might want to put like something in between, but that you're getting all those catchphrases. So um, that leads me to the next area. So according to Glenn Alsop, who is one of the top people in the country, or he's actually in the world for SEO. Uh, he actually, people pay him a lot of money to for their websites to be listed number one. One of the things that he suggests is for every single thing you offer, have a different website page. And I know that sounds terribly complicated, but it's not that difficult, especially if you use, um, I use HostGator and then I use, uh, I use HostGator as my platform, but Weebly is how I actually create my website and it's super easy. It's W-E-E-B-L-Y. They have templates that you literally cut and paste just like if you were doing a, a PowerPoint or something like that. It's really easy. And um, it, so what he suggests is having a different page for everything you offer. So you want a page for your infant room. You want a page for your toddlers. You want a page, you know, so every single one. So what you're going to do is have a menu, right? And then for each like so when parent it, you don't want to make it too complicated for your parents so you're going to have a menu and then when your parents are going to your page they'll click on the age groups they want the reason for this is because google is a machine it's not human and it doesn't reason like a human right it's looking to find websites with a lot of data on them 
and the way it's so it's looking for something kind of a little bit more complicated i guess is the way he explained it to make it easy to understand and that's what it's routing people to and it likes words it really likes lots and lots of words so when you're using google which is the number one search platform in the world by far that's what it's looking for so the more content you have the better off you are and that's why separating it out, it just makes your website look bigger and just more like there's more content. So one of the things Google does also is it's rating how long people spend on your website. So like, let's say, for example, uh, somebody Googles Reno, Nevada Child Care Centers and Google is presenting them with this list. OK, so every time somebody clicks on a specific center, if the parent really quickly clicks out and then scrolls down to a different one and then they spend like five or ten minutes on this different website google is actually going to rank them higher so they are actually rewarding the places that, that keep parents on there for a longer time so that can get a little muddy for us because we don't want to bore our parents and we don't want them to just be like so fresh we don't want a terribly complicated website where they're getting frustrated and then just leaving fast right but you want to keep them on your website because it is going to make you rank faster, higher, right? So we want to have some really good stuff on there, which leads me to my next point. Words is what Google's looking for. It likes words. Blogs. It, it's a great way to get more traffic to your website. And I know that sounds super scary, but it doesn't have to be as complicated just think of the things that you deal with every day, like um, potty training, diapering, um, even something like the best parks in town. Write a really quick couple of paragraphs, just like you were talking to a parent. Don't overcomplicate, just as if you guys were sitting and having a conversation. Just write something pretty short. It doesn't have to be super long, not even a page long. And okay i wrote for my center i think it was back in 2015 i wrote just a bunch of different things put it on there and that's it i don't have more than like 10. that's it the my entire purpose for having that was just to have more content that will get parents to my website okay so it doesn't have to be really super intimidating it doesn't mean you have to keep up with a blog it's just something that is going to get Google to see your website first, send parents there, and then it's going to keep the parents on there longer. And just think of subjects that we deal with all the time that never go away. So one of the ones um, I recently, I did actually recently put one on there. Uh, I do use my blog too as a tool for my teachers. So I have one on like, for example, um, what does developmentally appropriate art look like so that the teachers can go and refer the parents to it or they can print it for the parents and it just explains to the parent like why we do what we do but it's got some good key words in there that helps my search engine optimization another good one like i said earlier is they, like list the parks that are close to your center right and do an article about like if i you know reno is the closest bigger city to me so i would do something like the parks of reno nevada and I might see something like Rancho San Rafael Park because there's a ton of people who go there. So, or, you know, title it like um, best parks for preschoolers in Reno, Nevada. So those are something that parents are going to be searching and they're going to see you. It's going to keep that your website pretty popular and, you know, you're getting in front of the people you want to get in front of and you're so which is great for branding, but you're also adding that content Google wants to see so that you are first on these websites. Uh, and that's the, the what your really your goal is to be the first on the search. So knowing, um, you know, maybe even do some a blog post on good restaurants for children. So I know it just kind of seems like, well, what does that have to do with childcare? Remember, when you're enrolling children in childcare, you're you want to be the first center parent see when they're searching and they are looking on their phone. The next thing that really helps is um, if you Google 
childcare and the city that you're in. You're going to notice that people who pay Google have paid advertising usually are going to come up first, no matter how hard you try there. I don't even need to say usually they will always come up first. So places like care.com is going to be there. Um, Yelp is a huge one that's going to come up first. The other one is Google itself. Google and its reviews are going to be huge. So make sure you have your business is set up on Google with a link to your website, right? So you want to make sure that you have like a Gmail set up and you have a Google account for your business. If you Google your specific child care center, you probably already do anyway. Google is huge, you guys. So whether you set it up or not, Google probably already has you guys on there. And it, it will let you take control of the, so it, it is definitely worth your, your time and effort to put pictures up, put a description, your operating hours. You want to make sure you have control of that because that's also going to show you where, that will show people where you are on Google Maps too, right? So having that strong Google presence. When you are in Google's own platform and um, the one of the things that Google prioritizes there is how many parents have rated you. So that's where I do actually solicit parents to rate my center. And what I usually do is um, maybe once every other year or so, uh, you guys, if you're in bigger areas, you're probably going to need to do this more often. But what I would recommend is do some kind of contest. What I would do, and um, I do it for Yelp, Google, the bigger ones. And I just tell parents, if you go and rate our center, take a screenshot of it and share it on our Facebook page. I will enter you in a, um, you know, to win $50 off your tuition, something like that, whatever you guys want, but ask for the reviews. You want those reviews or, you know, if you, uh, if Facebook is another big one, you want them to review, right? So ask for the reviews for sure. Um, if you're not sure, ask select parents, write a letter or something and say, Hey, we would love, you know, the parents that you know are your biggest raving fans have a stock letter ready and give it to them and ask to write you a review. Just a quick tip on that too, that one of the things I do just to make their life easier. Do you guys, if you all know what a QR code is and I'm looking, usually they're everywhere, but I don't see one near me. QR codes are those cool little boxes that you scan with your telephone that send you to people's websites. There are a ton of free um, places where you can have those made. If you just Google free QR codes and actually at the end of your guys's, uh, let me see, I believe at the end of your workbook, I believe I put, um, a link. If I did, I'll look at it when I'm done. If I did not, I will post a link for you guys to get where you can get free QR codes because they are free you guys. So you can get one for your center. So something that I've done is, um, I'll just, I have just a generic letter and when I'm really soliciting, I'll put it up on my front desk and just like, Hey, you know, rate zooming around, um, and get in her to win this, this and that. Right. I put a QR code straight to my Google link or my Yelp link or whatever you can, you know, those parents that are your biggest fans, print it, give it to them. They, all they have to do is scan it with their phone. It takes them straight to it. They're not searching for you. So again, you can get a free QR code for that. You can also get the free QR code for your materials for your website. So really easy to do you guys. Super, super easy. You literally just go in, type in your website, type in whatever you do, and then it has you do download it. So those are really, really worth having. So soliciting for those reviews because Google does prioritize people who have a lot of reviews. Same thing with Yelp. And you guys know, I know we've all been there where, you know, that one person goes on Yelp and gives us a negative um, and it can be really tough. So when you really motivate parents to give us those good reviews, it also helps to downplay if you get a negative one, you know, but it also does help you in the SEO search. So it does make you come up first. And um, one of the things I like to tell myself too is I always want to stay like way above what everybody else is doing so that it's really difficult to get to the level that I'm at. 
So I think I was actually looking at it earlier today before I came on here with you guys. And my center has five times the amount of reviews than any other center in my area. So which there's not very many centers in my area, but I, I actually looked at a couple neighboring towns also though. So I would say within a 50 mile radius, I've got about five times the reviews. And that is because I've really worked to make sure we have those. And also it helps me to know that even if another um, center starts trying to cut, it's going to be really hard for them to catch up. So just keep that in mind. Yelp, Google, all of those. Those are going to be the first ones. So if a parent happens to click on Yelp first or Google first or care.com, you want to be first in their platforms too. So that brings me to my next point. Make sure that you are registered in each one of those. So go in and do a Google search for your town and then chat, you know, and then to put daycare, see what comes up. All of those companies that you can set up a profile on and 90% of the time they're free. I've never paid for one. They're all free. Set up an account on them. There are a lot of them, you guys. I, I probably have a dozen out there. There's like greatschools.com. There's so many of them. You'll see if you just do the Google search. Make sure you set up an account. Make sure your, your center is visible there. The other reason that's going to help you in Google searches is because if a parent goes into that platform and clicks on your link, that just brings more activity. The more activity Google sees, the more they prioritize your website. So a lot, right? That is a lot of information on making sure, but it is so important in our society to make sure that you have an online present and you're first. Also, Facebook is huge. Um, make sure you have a Facebook page. Make sure you've got ratings on there. But Instagram is even bigger. I know a lot of us, um, we love Instagram. But if we, again, you got to keep that demographic in mind. The demographic and the people that we are targeting. As business people, you know, as center directors and owners, Facebook has some benefits for us. But most people, they're on Instagram. Instagram is much, much bigger. The other thing to keep in mind is YouTube is actually the second in the world. So if you, you know, want one, maybe one weekend or after hours, take some quick videos of your center when there's no children in it, just a quick commercial type of video and upload it to, to YouTube. That's pretty, you know, create a, an account with your center and kind of do a quick commercial, you know, film yourself just like I'm filming myself right now. And it's a great idea. Just put that on as a commercial on YouTube. That's another great way to get some more traffic, right? Just let people see what your center has to offer. And so you just want exposure, you guys. That's just, it's huge. Exposure will really help you to get those phones ringing, right? That is our goal is to get the phone ringing so we can up our enrollment. So next we're going to dive into your phone call. And um, so now that you've got your phone ringing, right? You're first on the list. People are Googling you. You're coming up first. Now your phone's ringing. This is the first point of contact parents have with you. So it is absolutely essential that you are prepared and that you have a very professional uh, persona on the telephone. You guys have got to be professional. The other thing with the telephone is you have to make sure your phone is always answered. My husband and I used to argue about this when I first went into business. My, and my husband has a ton of corporate management and he used to tell me all the time, he would call my center, nobody was answering the phone and he would just get on me like, you've got to answer the phone. Phones are so important. You've got to answer, you've got to answer. And I finally listened and I finally just prioritized it. One of the things we do in my center, I actually went and bought those cordless phones that actually has I think we have uh, five different cordless phones. And then we have the one at our front desk, which isn't cordless, you know, it's a wired phone. We have them in every classroom all over the place. And the reason we do that is because you guys know, as owners and directors, we're all over the place. We're not just sitting in the office or at the front desk, unless you're you know, lucky enough to have a receptionist, we are all over the place. So what was I was noticing was happening is I would be in the classroom that's farthest away from the front desk and then the phone would ring and by the time I ran up front to get it, I, I wasn't making it in time. 
or I would lose the cordless phone. I would have no idea which classroom I left it in. I would be running and trying to find it, right? And so if you have multiple cordless phones and they're spread out throughout the entire building, there's one pretty close to you. The other thing is your staff can help you answer the phone. Sometimes you may be on another line. You may be talking to a parent. It's rude for us to stop talking to a parent to answer the phone, right? So train your staff to answer the phone. Train them to have a very professional persona. That is the most important thing though. You, if your staff is gonna answer the phone and your teachers, they've gotta be professional. The other thing I have to say about that is yesterday, again, I'm gonna tell you guys, hashtag organized chaos. The preschool word, world, we live in chaos, right? It is always some kind of fun, not so fun sometimes, but we live in constant chaos. It is, um, but parents don't wanna see that. They don't wanna know that you're in the middle of a classroom and you've got a bunch of two-year-olds tugging on you, right, to play with them or to, to you know, you might have water play day and you might have a bunch of two-year-olds who are soaked and they're having a blast, you know, washing, doing a car wash or something. But parents want you to sound like you've got your stuff together and that everything is great. So when you pick up that phone, you cannot reveal the chaos that is happening around you. You have to sound like you are on top of things, right? So you just have to put that professional face on. It doesn't mean, I'm not saying that you can't have kids in the background. That is totally fine. But I'm saying you just have to sound, you know, you can't be like, oh, thank you for calling. Out of breath. You can't sound like you're, you know, just, oh, hold on a second. I can't talk. You know, I got to deal with this. Just be ready for that phone call. Uh, and it's better in that case to let it go to the answering machine. And... You let them know like, okay, I am, you know, in a classroom having fun with the kids right now. Just, I'm going to step out so I can hear you better. You know, just be ready, be prepared, have a script in mind. You can say like, you know, we were just having a great time with Play-Doh in here. So just give me one second while I step out so I can talk with you, but just be ready and prepared. Don't make it sound like you're exhausted or you're desperate to, you know, get away from these kids or something, which I know a lot of times you, you know, you might've just been dealing with a biter or something and you're just like, this is not a good time. I know you're thinking that, but you can't say that, okay? So if you guys look at your workbooks, I do have, um, I did actually provide you guys with a script, a phone script to help you guys uh, on when you're answering the phone. This is something you can also give to your staff members, right? So that they know what to say. If you don't want your staff members talking to potential tours and you don't want your teachers to really give out prices or anything like that, that is totally fine. I understand that. The one thing I'm going to tell you guys to train your staff on is make sure your staff never tells parents on the phone that they don't know. Oh, you're welcome for the script, Karen. I'm glad to provide it. I train my staff to never tell parents, I don't know. That is the worst thing. Think about it as a parent. Do you ever want to hear that phrase? I don't know. You don't, right? So, and, and this is really, you guys, it applies to everything. Whenever my uh, parents, I train myself to say, you know, I'm sorry, I don't have the answer for you to you for that right this second, but I will get that to you by and make them come up with a timeline, okay? So if for some reason you had to step away from your center or something's going on and one of your teachers is answering the phone, let them know. I will be back at two o'clock. If anyone calls, let them know I'll be returning phone calls between two and three o'clock. Okay, so that's what your parent, your center, uh, your teachers will say when they're whoever's answering the phone. They can say, you know, I'm sorry, I do not have the availability right now for the particular age group that you're looking at, but my director will be back at two o'clock and she'll be returning phone calls from this time to this time. She would be happy to call you back. Can I get your name and number? So making sure they're prepared. They sound professional and they're prepared. So just know you guys don't, not everybody has to have all the answers, but you have to sound like you guys have your stuff together. So like, oh, I can't answer that for you. Can you call back later when my director's here? That sounds terrible. So imagine if that's how your teachers answer the phone, okay? Imagine if your teacher, that's the script they use. Like, uh, you know what? My director's not here right now, but um, if you can call back in like an hour, she'll be here. Now imagine they call my center. Next. And my teacher says, 
I'm sorry, my director's not here right now, but she'll be returning phone calls between two and three o'clock. Can I please get your name and phone number? That parent is going to sign their kids up with. Which center are they going to enroll with? Are they going to bother to call your center back? Think about that. So that's why your phone presence is so very important. That is the first contact most parents have with us as professionals. And yes, Alana, Miss Alana is one of my, my, she's my assistant director and been there, done that. Absolutely. Um, so just having that professional, making sure your phones are answered and everybody who's answering it is answering it in a professional manner. That, that is your first impression. And you guys, when it comes to caring for people's children, which is the most important part of everybody's life, you've got to have a good first impression right so the phone is so incredibly important so look at the phone script that i've given you guys and i really do encourage you also to come up with other scripts that are similar when it comes to answering the phone the one that i have here for you guys is really specifically for enrolling children some of the things i really want to point out to you on the phone script is um if you notice that something you're probably not doing is asking for the caller's name and using it, making that personal connection. You're building trust, making a connection, right? And I also make sure I introduce myself, okay? So you want to thank them for calling your centers, answering it very professional, tell them who you are, and then you're going to ask them for your caller's name. So if you guys have the workbook, if you need the workbook, let me know in the comments and I will make sure that you get one of the workbooks. I think everybody should have one by now. Uh, we've been working on making sure everybody's got them, but let me know if you don't. And when you respond, you're going to respond with their name. And I cannot stress to you guys how important it is to take notes. You don't want to forget the person's name, right? If you ask, I usually ask for the child's name too. I don't want to forget that. So I'm writing all this down. Okay, so you want to make sure you're using it. One of the things also that you'll notice is I do tell every parent that we have an open door policy that they are welcome to come anytime, but if they would like, we can schedule an appointment. The reason I do that and the reason I suggest that is I personally, as a parent, would be very suspicious of a place that only allowed me to come certain hours of the day. My center has an open door policy. Parents are always welcome. I want them to know that their children are always safe. My center has nothing to hide, that we only have, you know, that we our quality is always top notch no matter what time they come. So I never tell a parent that they only can come between this time and that time. Because the first thing I would think of is why? What are you doing between those other times that I'm not allowed to be here? What's going on? That would just automatically send red flags and there is no way I would even tour with your center. So, and, and I am kind of a paranoid mom, part of my husband, you know, we're just super protective, paranoid, but a lot of parents are, and we should be, right? We are protecting and we are in charge of the most important thing in the world, young children who don't have their own voice yet. So it is our responsibility to make sure we're making parents feel welcome, reassured, and safe. And that is one of the ways I do it is, um, if they want to just drop by, they can drop by. Let them know that because sometimes that makes them feel safe. That makes them know that you don't, you know, you're not on your guard, that they just, so, uh, and, and I don't know, some people just think that way. Other people want that appointment. It does go to that professionalism, right? They want to make an appointment with you. It makes them feel like you're professional, like they, you know, you're taking this time aside for them. So you want to give both options so that you're serving both types of customers, right? So, okay, Jesse, you need a workbook. I will get you the workbook. And um, so you want to make sure that you're adapting to both. So that is really important, you guys, to not just limit one or the other. Now, I do understand nap time is rough. So one of the things I do tell parents is this time to this time is nap time. So my script, basically, I say, you know, from 1230 to 230, our program is, some of our classrooms are at nap, so you're not gonna be able to see our program in action. If you need to come during that time, you are more than welcome to come during that time. But I usually suggest you come around that time because you're really not gonna get to see the classrooms at work during those times. So that's how I talk to parents about nap time. And when you explain it to them like that, they usually don't wanna come during nap. 
they don't want uh, they want to see the classrooms in action they want to be able to talk to the teacher they want to see the children playing and engaged right so if you explain to them yeah they're not going to see much at nap time they usually will avoid it so there's ways to avoid parents coming during nap without actually saying you cannot come during nap okay so that's the thing because um just parents who are already paranoid and scared to enroll their kids which remember is 80 percent of the population we forget that but it's 80 percent of the population they are going to um, want to avoid nap time anyway so just be aware of that do you guys have any questions so far anything i hope this is useful for you guys so go ahead and look at my phone script that i have there for you adapt it for your center you guys i what i would suggest doing is literally cut and paste it put your center's name in it give it to the staff that'll be answering the phone train them on it and adapt it to fit your center's needs so make it fit your center's personality okay so does anyone have any questions that is what i have for you guys today tomorrow we'll go into always being tour ready and why that is so important to be tour ready and just having that professionalism all the time. Well, I hope that was helpful. Again, you guys keep the messages coming. I got a lot of messages from you guys today. Questions. If you have any questions, please feel free to message me. Uh, I will email you uh, for those of you who do not have the workbook yet. Um, some of you guys, I cannot message. You have messaging disabled. So if you haven't gotten uh, your workbook, that may be why I did actually comment back to you um, if I couldn't message you. And I did get a lot of your emails. So just let me know. Uh, so please, you guys can ask questions uh, in the feed. I will be going through and answering. And again, remember on Saturday, we're gonna do the question and answer portion. And tomorrow we'll be back here again for the tour. And I will go over with you guys how we structure our tour, what we give out for our tour, the kind of information that we provide, and um, you know just what kind of points you want now that you've got them in your door. So I hope everybody has a wonderful evening and I will see you guys tomorrow. Good night.